I'm Betty. Welcome to my kitchen. If I had to pick a favorite cookie out of the 30 varieties or more that I make every year, this one would be it. They're called Venetians, probably because they're a three-colored cookie. And it's a recipe I got from a supermarket magazine many, many years ago. But my way of making it is just a little different, and I also add a luxurious layer of marzipan on the top, which is actually how I remember first getting these cookie many, many years ago from a wonderful bakery in New York. So here are the ingredients, and I know it looks like a lot, but it's worth it, and this recipe makes a lot of cookies. So we're going to start with four eggs that I've separated. I've got three quarters of a pound of butter, eight ounces of almond paste, a cup of sugar, two cups of flour, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of almond flavoring, and a 17 or so ounce jar of good apricot preserves. I've also got some red and green food coloring. And the reason this one's upside down in a jar is because there's just a little bit left and I want to be able to get it out easily. So we're going to start by grating this almond paste in a food processor. You can break it up, but I have always found that no matter how hard I try, if I do this in a mixer, I always end up with lumps of almond paste, which is not unpleasant, but I do prefer it to be uh, uh, you know, really well incorporated. So we're just going to stick this into the food processor, and it fits quite nicely, and I'm going to grate it. I do have a couple of little pieces here left, but it's quite soft and it won't be a problem. I'll discard the grating blade and insert the, um, the regular blade. All right, so I'm just going to add in all of this butter, which is at room temperature, of course. And add the sugar. the egg yolks, and the almond flavoring. And with that done, I'm going to put that on. And let that go until it's well incorporated. You can see then that this mixture is nice and smooth, no lumps anywhere. So I'm just going to pop in the flour and the salt, and I'm just going to pulse this until the flour disappears. And that looks good. With this part of the mixture done, I'm going to transfer it to a large bowl. Because the next step I'm going to do are beat some egg whites until they're stiff and then fold them into this batter. Scoop all of this in. As I say, this may seem like a lot of work and a lot of ingredients, but you do get an awful lot of cookies from this recipe. And it's a recipe, they're, a, they're a cookie that keeps extremely well. But my next step now, as I said, is to beat the egg whites until they're quite stiff. So I'm gonna whisk these egg whites in my favorite place, which is the kitchen sink, because the, uh, the lower level makes it just that much easier to, uh, to whisk, especially because I'm using the uh, whisk attachment from my immersion blender. So we'll start them off slowly and then increase the speed. 
and whip them until they're stiff but still glossy and not dried out. Mm, they're falling over, which means they need just a minute or so more. There. They're standing up in stiff peaks, and that's exactly what we need. We'll just put this aside and get ready to fold this into the, uh, the almond paste batter. As with any time we're incorporating egg whites, you want to take about a third of the mixture and simply stir it into the base to lighten it somewhat, although this is still going to be a fairly heavy batter. And while I'm calling this a cookie, in essence, what you're making is three very thin cakes. And you'll see how that works as we go along. I've got prepared three nine by 13 shallow pans, which I've greased and lined with wax paper and then greased the wax paper. Now I'm gonna fold the rest of these in. sure we get all of that. These are not going to be uh, light cakes. They're, they're Even with the egg whites like this, they're still going to be fairly dense. And you may have seen these cookies in your supermarket, tried them, and thought they're nothing but a colorful but very dry cookie. Well, these are going to be beautifully moist with the almond paste and the um, the apricot jam filling. They really, well, as I said, they're my favorites. Now, once I get all of this done, I'm going to divide the, the batter in thirds. One, half, one third will remain uh, this base color. One, I will add some green food coloring to and the other will get some red food coloring. That looks pretty good. I'm not really seeing any streaks uh, of white in there anymore. So I'm gonna divide this, and it's about a cup and a half um, of each uh, color that you're going to do. So you'll want to have ready some extra bowls. And I can use this one that has some uh, some egg white in it. I'm just going to turn the yellow dough out onto the prepared pan. And I'm going to use an offset spatula to get this as evenly distributed as I can. As you'll see, these cakes are quite thin, so you don't want to get any, uh, any real thin spots that, that might burn. Make sure you get it into the corners. And we're just about there on this layer. As you'll see, once we put these together, we're going. We will trim the edges so that the cookie, uh, the cookies all look very neat. But there, I think that will do for that. And I'll set this aside, and I'm going to start adding the food coloring to my other layers. I've added a couple of drops of green food coloring. Now, the the cookies that you see in the supermarket or or even a lot of bakeries, are quite violently colored, I think. And I prefer to have mine more on the pale side, but you, of course, can add as much or as little food coloring as you like. Just going to stir this to get it well mixed, and then proceed with the same method of, of getting it into the pan and getting it as smooth as possible and even. The color on this is quite even, so just as with the previous layer, 
I'm going to put this in my pan and even it out. It's one of those things that really is good to the last drop. With my three layers assembled, I'm ready to put them into my oven, which is preheated at 350, and these will bake for about 12 to 15 minutes, or just until you see the slightest tinge of brown around the edges. I'm going to turn the light on in the oven so I can check the progress. My cakes are ready. They're dry on top and have a perfect light brown edge. I'm just going to place them on cooling racks for a moment and then I'm going to turn them out to finish cooling. I'm going to turn these out right away to finish cooling. What I'm going to do is Invert this, get this rag out of the way for just a second. Just going to use a little spatula to let me get this hot pan out of the way. And I'll peel off the paper. And I'm immediately going to invert this onto another rack so that it's right side up. Now I'll just repeat the process with the other layers. We're going to use the apricot jam to sandwich these cake layers together. And I've heated this in the microwave, and I'm going to pass it through a sieve to get rid of any of the, uh, the solids in the jam. I want to get, of course, as much of this as I can. And just mash it down there. All right, so now we're ready to assemble the cake layers. I've lined a, uh, a sturdy cookie sheet with some wax paper, and I'm going to slide first the green layer. I've, I'm going to loosen the bottom with a spatula. I can feel that that's loose. You'll see there's a slight crack in this one, but it won't matter once the cookies are sandwiched. Slide that out. And I'm going to take some of our, about a third of this warm apricot jam. Just get a little more there. And spread this all over. What I'm going to do once I assemble all these, I'll put another cookie sheet on top and weight it down. Just scoop that off. Just going to finish spreading this with an offset spatula. I want to get it all the way out to the ends. Just dip a little bit more there. Right, so now I'm going to put the yellow layer on top of the green. And that's just going to slide right on there. And again, we're going to spread that with some more of this apricot jam. Now, once that is even, we'll top it with the um, with the pink layer. I'm just going to give this a little dab there. Make sure that's loose. And again, just slide it right on. Line it up. And we're not going to top that with jam right now. I'm going to weight it down, as I said, and when I go to finish this off tomorrow, I'll put uh, the rest of the apricot jam on there before topping it with marzipan and chocolate. I'm going to cover this now with some plastic wrap, sort of tucking it in as I can, just making sure this is nicely covered. Stick that all in there, and now, I'm going to take a second cookie sheet, and you want a good heavy weight. I'm using this marble cheese board, which is quite heavy. Just put that right on top, 
and it's going to go in the refrigerator overnight. And that apricot jam is sort of going to disappear into the layers and it softens them and it will hold together beautifully. So see you back in the morning. So day two on Venetians. I've taken them out of the refrigerator. I just remove my cookie sheet with the weight and take the saran off. I've got my jam warmed, ready to spread on there, but first I want to roll out my marzipan. Now marzipan is one of my favorite things in the whole world. So the amount I'm using is, actually it's 500 grams, so it's about one pound, two ounces. You of course can use half a pound, you don't have to use it at all, but it does add an immense amount of flavor to this cookie. So instead of just taking my rolling pin and starting out with this big block and rolling and rolling, what I'm going to do is cut this in fairly even slices. Now I've marked a template, as you can see underneath, the approximate size uh, that I'll need. I just traced around uh, my jelly roll pan. And once I get these all in place, I'll roll them, and because the marzipan is nice and fresh and soft, it'll roll out quite easily. This, of course, was some of the marzipan I brought back from our trip to England this summer. I do love the marzipan over there. There. And so what I will do now is slide my template on top and I'm ready to start rolling. As you can see, this rolls together quite easily. Now it's just a question of a little patience to get rolled out into the size we need. So I finally got this rolled out to the right size pretty much. Don't worry if it's not quite at the uh, at the edges since we are going to be trimming uh, the edges once the cake is completed. Just peel this back and if you're peeling a paper like this never pull it straight up. Always this way. It provides the least amount of resistance. And that is actually something I learned from a surgeon one time when he was removing a particularly large piece of adhesive off some part or other of me. And he explained that this would be the most painless way to do it. And there we go. This has a wrinkle, so I'm going to make sure that that's the side I put down on the cake. So I've got the rest of my apricot jam, which I've warmed slightly. Just put a nice coating of that on. This, of course, is one of the things that, that helps keep the, uh, the layers moist. You do want to use a good quality apricot jam. And what I have found, if it's really good jam, when you open the jar, you just get that wonderful aroma of apricots. I do like the flavor of this. And it just all goes together so well. Of course, this is what, the sticky layer is what is gonna make this marzipan adhere to the cake. And that looks quite good. Get it onto that corner. Set that aside. Now what I'll do is I'm going to turn this board around because it's just going to make it easier for me to flip this on. I can hold this up and just flip it right on there and using the paper I can adjust it slightly. Again, I'm not too worried 
if a tiny corner isn't covered because I am going to be trimming those edges. And once again, peel the paper off. Now all that remains to do is melt some chocolate and cover the marzipan with that. I'm chopping about three ounces or so of a very good quality dark chocolate. And when you're chopping chocolate to melt it, a serrated knife is probably the easiest way to do it. And this will just go in the microwave. I'll do it in 30 second bursts at 50% power. I don't want to scorch this. If you, if you do scorch it, it, uh, it can't be reclaimed. You have to throw it out and start all over. And if you're nervous about doing it in the microwave, do it over uh, a double boiler with simmering water. I've had this in the microwave uh, at 30 second intervals for about a minute and a half. And as you can see, there are still some lumps. But I like to take it out after each 30 second inc increment and give it a stir and just check on its progress. So it's going back in for about another 30 seconds, although at this point, I'll check on it at 15 second increments. That last 15 seconds just about did it. Now there are a few little bits left, which is just perfect because I'm going to stir this until they melt. And this essentially achieves the same thing as tempering the chocolate. So it'll have a nice lustrous finish. Although it doesn't really matter that much on these cookies because as you'll see when we slice them, any uh, irregularity in the color is not going to be noticed. But that looks quite good. I'm just gonna pour this lovely chocolate all over. This is, I think this is about a 70% cocoa solid chocolate. It's nice and dark. You want a good strong chocolate because there's not very much of it obviously on each little piece of cookie. So in order to get the taste, dark is really the way to go. All right, I've applied the chocolate and now all that remains is to let this set up until it's cool enough to cut into bars. So to finish this off, we're going to cut the, uh, the cake in bars. And I'm going to start by cutting it in the middle, more or less. Just rock your knife back and forth through the chocolate so you don't crack the top. And go all the way down to the bottom. There we go. And I like to use a sponge. You want to wipe your knife off in between each cut so that you don't get smears on the top. Once again, I'm going to turn this around and we'll slice this half in the, well, actually what I'm going to do before I even do that is I'm just going to trim these edges. And you're going to get an idea of what this beautiful cookie looks like. Of course, these little trimmings don't get thrown away. They're what's known as Cook's Treats. Again, just rock this back and forth gently so I don't crack the chocolate. Now, it does seem to set. Now, if you find that it is cracking, what you wanna do is just run your knife under some very hot water. And to make your next cut, and I'm going to do that now. Right, that water is good and hot. Just run it for a second or two to get your blade warm, and of course dry it off. And we'll cut this cake down the center. You're going to get four bars out of each half, obviously for a total of eight. And each bar will slice into quite a few cookies. You can, of course, make the cookies any thickness you like. 
I make them in fairly thin slices. Since when I'm serving my Christmas cookies, there's quite a variety, and if I keep them small, guests are able to sample a few different kinds. Now, this is about the size I make the individual cookies. This jam is still a little runny because it's quite fresh. Of course, these are going to be wrapped up and popped in the freezer. So that is what your finished cookie is going to look like. Now to package these, I simply wrap them in wax paper, and then I'll package them up in a, uh, in a plastic box and store them in the freezer, ready for Christmas. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.